Hi, and welcome to the webinar. In this webinar, I'm going to give you a background about DBSync and how using DBSync you can simplify integration between QuickBooks and Salesforce. We're going to see a demo about how Salesforce communicates with QuickBooks, and we're going to see the application connect with PayPal and Authorize.net to process payments with Salesforce. Now here's the background about DBSync. DBSync is an on-demand integration platform for software as a service and on-premise applications. DBSync is headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee. And DBSync has multiple products in the App Exchange, such as DBSync for credit card apps, DBSync for database integrations. We also have applications built on the Force.com platform for healthcare and the recruiting industry. We've grown to sustain over 100 customers, and we've been awarded the Killer VAR Award by WebCPA, as well as been consistently featured in Inc. 5000. A major focus of DBSync is to increase is to be a provider of integrating solutions that connects software as a service applications to improve information sharing and reduce double data entry. We achieve this by using DBSync as an integration platform to move information back uh, to move information back and forth across multiple systems regardless of whether they're on demand or on premise. Now I'm going to give you a background of the application and some integration work that we've done. PRSoft is a company based in Puerto Rico. They have over 50 employees and they're in the accounting software industry. And they required, uh, they're required to use DBSync so that they could generate invoices in QuickBooks after the opportunities close in, in Salesforce. So all the salespeople thus are well informed regarding what invoices have to be sent and accounting staff, they'll get to see all invoices coming in as an opportunity gets closed. So they're using DBSync to generate invoices in QuickBooks and push that into opportunities close into Salesforce CRM. Essentially, they're able to cut down the double date entry portion and reduce the total turnaround time that they had previously required. Since now, there's the information is seamless and everything's integrated together so they don't have to worry anymore. Custom Toll Free is a small business in Seattle, Washington. They have less than 10 Salesforce users. And they're in the telecom industry. They use DBSync to reduce overhead cost. That is, there's no calls or emails going back and forth to generate invoices or to, re or to reconcile accounts between Salesforce and QuickBooks. And they can quickly generate invoices from QuickBooks into Salesforce so that the salesperson can see it and reduce and it reduces the overhead cost of generating and sending those invoices across to the concerned account executive because everybody's on the same page. So they're using DBSync, and they've essentially reduced their overhead dramatically because for a small firm, you know, one employee that only has 10 employees is a huge cost savings to that firm. The next company I want to speak with you regarding is E Plus Cancer Care. They're based in Nashville, Tennessee. They have over 100 employees in over 10 or over 15 radiology centers across the United States. They use uh, DBSync to integrate and synchronize physician relationship executive patient information from their electronic medical records regarding patient scheduling. So we've done a lot of integration work for them as well. Now I'm going to provide you a background about the integrations that you can do with DBSync and how the, DB, uh, how the integration works between Salesforce and QuickBooks. So an account and contact get pushed across to QuickBooks as a customer and as a job. And by default, the opportunity name, uh, the account and object, by default, the account and a contact object get integrated with QuickBooks as a customer and as a job. And also by default, the opportunity name is used to create a job, but the contact name can also be used to create, can be created as a job as well. For DBSync, is completely customizable. So an opportunity and opportunity line items together taken together, they create transactions such as estimates, invoices, sales orders, sales receipts, and credit memos. And since this is a bi-directional sync, information moves from one system to another, so you get a complete understanding of your business and everyone is on the same page. So that's a wonderful thing about using DBSync. That information is going to be integrated on both systems. So visibility is increased, and here in this example here, you can see products that get a pushed across into items and payments, which are a custom object to Salesforce, get sent across into QuickBooks as payments. 
For that matter, you can map any type of process, whether it be a billing process, an HR process, whatever in your organization that can be mapped in that system to any other third-party system like QuickBooks or databases. So as you can see, for example, time tracking, and any custom object can be extended over to QuickBooks. And DBSync is capable of integrating multiple applications and e-commerce solutions or databases. By default, you provide integration with PayPal, Authorized.net, OS Commerce can also be integrated with Salesforce by DBSync. Another wonderful thing about DBSync is you're able to integrate one Salesforce instance with multiple QuickBooks files. So if you have a franchise, or if you have rather a multi-entity like franchises, for example, we can support the franchise model with DBSync because we can, because DBSync can handle integrating multiple QuickBooks and accounting systems. So why use DBSync? DBSync cuts down on double data entry. Information will move seamlessly across from Salesforce to QuickBooks whenever a deal is closed or whenever you want an estimate to be generated or a sales order to be generated. Information moves along with the customer contact information and the items that are purchased and you create a specific transaction and that transaction gets pushed across or a copy of that transaction gets pushed back into Salesforce once it's created in QuickBooks so that the sales rep would not have to wait for accounting to send the transaction to the client or worse even have to recreate it, the transaction to give to the client. And again, you have increased information sharing as you see here. That means that the sales and accounting team can do more sharing information so the accountant doesn't have to waste the time to follow up in terms of what are the invoices that have to be sent and the salesperson doesn't have to wait for reports. We also grow with your needs. We're able to grow from, uh, you know, if you have a simple business process or elaborate business process, DBSync can handle it. We're also the most customizable integration for QuickBooks that's there in the marketplace. We have a built-in extract, transform, load process and visual mapping and process flow, so it's very uh, easy and clean way of doing this integration. We also support multiple QuickBooks or e-commerce, accounting or databases, as, as we had mentioned earlier. We also offer in-person support over... Uh, the internet and we also have in-house accounting expertise and consultants that are there to assist you so we have the product knowledge to conquer uh, any tasks that we may have to do for you we are also Salesforce certified which is very important Salesforce certified with Apex development now this demonstration here we're going to show you how an invoice can be generated in Salesforce without integrating or synchronizing into QuickBooks using Apex and Visual Force which is being integrated with PayPal so a payment will be received from a client, and that's going to be uploaded into Salesforce. And then we're going to move that information to QuickBooks to generate an invoice, and then push that information back into Salesforce. I'll show you how Authorize.net can be used to accept payments in Salesforce.com. So the first step here is we have to go to www.mydbsync.com. We're going to click on Customer Login. We're going to log into our DBSync. And... In DBSync, we have a library of pre-configured adapters that you can use. So we're going to click on Library, and we're going to look for the Salesforce QuickBooks Bidirectional Library, or adapter rather, and we're going to add that adapter to our to our DBSync. So I'm going to click on the Add button, and what this will do is it will automatically open up the DBSync Get Started page, which is a very simple interface. It's gonna. It's so simple to set up DBSync. So all you have to do here is put in your password, your username or password for your Salesforce instance. So let me type in my username here and my password and security token. And the endpoint, you don't really have to worry about that. That's just there. So it, it's already there and you don't have to do anything with that. So just click on validate. And once you click on valid, it says here the connection settings are valid. Right there. So I'm going to click on continue. And that's going to take me to the QuickBooks adapter. Now the QuickBooks adapter, you can specify the file name here that you want to synchronize uh, your Salesforce with. Or what it's going to do is if you have a QuickBooks file that's already open, it's going to look for that QuickBooks file and it's going to synchronize with that open QuickBooks file. So here I have an open QuickBooks file. So I'm not going to put anything in the file name here. And the PDL is a process definition language. That file is already there as well. So now I'm going to click on this configuration link, and that's going to open the QuickBooks web connector. So I'm going to click OK. 
and upon clicking OK, I have to authorize this new web service, so I have to say yes, it's OK, that uh, we're granting web access to this QuickBooks account, so I'm going to click on OK. And then another another application certificate will be open, and here it says, do you want to allow this application to read and modify this company file? So I'm going to click on yes, always allow access, even if QuickBooks is not running. That way, we can always have access, again, if QuickBooks is not running. So I'm going to click on continue and click on done. And this is the QuickBooks Web Connector. I'll be speaking in more detail about this later, but for right now, just put in your DBC password right here. And I'm going to save this password. And so now I'm going to go into our Salesforce. Uh, and in the Salesforce, we're going to show you a demo of how the information is flowing here. So I have an account here called Amazon.com, which I've opened here. And here we have an adapter that's already in the products book. So I'm going to use that QuickBooks adapter here. And you can see we've added the products as well as the contacts. So I'm going to click on send an email in the activity history. And one, then I'm going to look uh, and click on select a template. And here once you click on template, you can see an invoice attached to it. So here is the receive payment template. So I'm going to click on that. And now here is the uh, invoice that I was speaking of, the attachment there is a PDF document. So I'm going to open the invoice in a new window or a new tab. And here is the invoice you can see, the company logo of Ankia right here. You can replace that whatever, uh, customize this invoice to your liking. I'm going to click here on this pay now link. And by clicking on Pay Now, it'll take you to a page on the server to process the invoice. So here I have my company name and my payment details. So if I click on Purchase Product, that pushes the payment information to Salesforce.com. And now once the invoice has been sent and a payment has been processed, in order to generate an invoice in QuickBooks, the opportunity has to be marked. So in order to mark the opportunity, I'm going to go here. Well, first, let me click on this purchase product. So here, I'm going to click on purchase product, and then I'm going to go back into the opportunity. So here's the opportunity, and I'm going to click on edit here. And what we're going to do is this generate field is the trigger point. It serves as a trigger point, and you can select an estimate, an invoice, sales order, or sales receipt. So this is what uh, triggers and alerts uh, DBSync to know which information has to be moved across into QuickBooks. So here I've selected an invoice, and I'm going to click on. I clicked on Save. So once it's marked now as generated an invoice, I'm going to open the QuickBooks Web Connector to synchronize automatically with QuickBooks. So here is the check mark, and I can select select update selected and that's going to manually trigger the synchronization or I can it can be set on op, auto run so I can click the checkbox and set the frequency and the synchronization will happen automatically for the demo I'm going to be syncing it manually so I'm going to click on update selected and I'm going to open QuickBooks and you can see that information that is that has been synchronized from Salesforce to QuickBooks we're going to move the information from Salesforce querying within QuickBooks to see if that the, that the customer is already existing in QuickBooks. If the customer is already existing in QuickBooks, it's going to update the existing information from Salesforce into QuickBooks if there hasn't been any change in the billing address or the contact details. So here you can see the uh, customer information and the job information. So if the customer is not existing in QuickBooks, as is, this is the case here, it'll create a new customer along with the job. That would be the opportunity name, and it would all create an invoice in QuickBooks. So here's the invoice. And you can see here that the customer job and invoice have been created. So by default, the invoice would be pending. And I'm going to show you that here by opening the invoice. Here there's a stamp here that says pending. 
And so if you have an authorization process for which the account, accounting person uh, needs to process this and approve this uh, invoice, they can go to Report Center, click on Sales. So I'm going to look for Pending Sales. So let's find Pending Sales here. And they can use that to see all the pending invoices within the specified account or QuickBooks file. So the new pending invoices can be seen that have been created. So once I find this pending sales report, I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to make sure I search for the correct dates since there's nothing showing here. And here you can see the Amazon opportunity. So I'm going to right click on the invoice to mark it as final by clicking mark invoice as final. And now it will show as authorized and will be reflected in QuickBooks. So now when I go into Salesforce and I click on refresh, you can notice the generate field there. It's going to say invoice updated. And once it says invoice updated, you know that the synchronization is complete. So I'm going to scroll down and see a copy of the invoice under the invoice section. The invoice section will show the invoice number, the total, the invoice amount, the number of days outstanding from the total date of a transaction. So I'm going to click on this invoice here, and you can see that's going to use, you can click on PDF view, and it's going to use Visual Force to open a PDF. So you must have Salesforce Developer Edition for this functionality, but it's going to open up the invoice so you can see it from your Salesforce instance. And that way your salespeople in the field don't have to bother dealing with QuickBooks. And here's the same invoice that's been pushed across into Salesforce. So I'm going to close that PDF like I did there. And I'm going to click on the opportunity name in Salesforce under invoice. So here I have uh, the credit card information. And this is going to be using authorized.net. So the payment, we can click on get full payment. And the payment has been pushed across from QuickBooks, hence the credit card information can be viewed here. So if you want to capture payment from Salesforce into QuickBooks, or if you want to process a payment using authorized.net, you can click on get full payment as we did. And if I click on capture, this will lead, you know, this will load up the payment object within Salesforce.com. Primarily it's a virtual terminal and you can see the payment being captured onto it by clicking on capture. So you can see here the payment has been captured. This is the last payment here. So it's been approved. Now I'm going to go back into the opportunities page and scroll down. And so I've done that. Now once this has been done, it's very helpful to re run reports within Salesforce. So that way you can click on the home page and then you can go to the dashboard and you can click on the graphs of outstanding balances and AR days outstanding to see more statistics. So here I have a AR days outstanding report and you can run any sorts of reports that you'd like to in, in Salesforce. So that is the contents of our demo. Thank you for watching this webinar. I encourage you to go to mydbsync.com and register for a free trial or call 1-877-739-2818 or email us at sales at avanke.com. I encourage you to register for the free trial. We offer, we have self, there's a self-install option or you can get a support engineer to set up the free trial for you. You can try before you buy or you can just purchase the product. We have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, and you need more time than, than is offered in a trial period, then you can just go ahead and uh, we can send you an invoice and uh, we can go from there. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.